No, you gonna dig this. Hi, I'm Stan the Man Brooks, host of Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center's award-winning show, Funk Chronicles, recorded live here at DATV Studios in Dayton, Ohio. And now in my studio today, our studio guest, New Horizon, yes. Mr. Mark Thomas. How, you, how doing? you doing, I'm sir? I'm good, I'm good. Doing outstanding? Great. And Tim Abrams. How Tim, how are you, sir? The man. Yes, sir. Good evening or afternoon or daytime. It depends on when they're listening to us today. Okay. I tell you what, gentlemen, it is a pleasure having y'all here in the studios with us today. It's all our, all our pleasure. Yes. You know, pleasure being here. New Horizon. Yes. Well, I tell you what, let's just start at the beginning. We'll, we'll get to the group in just a second. But tell me a little bit about Mr. Mark Thomas and Tim Abrams and how y'all hooked up before the group uh, did any recording. Uh, that's, uh, we have to go back to grade school. I want you to go back there. <laughs> I was uh, seventh grade, Westwood Elementary. Westwood Elementary. <laughs> this guy right here, phenomenal drummer. And uh, I play drums. Yeah, and, I uh, play drums, but go with <laughs> yeah. That's another, another Yeah, so we decided uh, that we wanted to do a band thing, but we was like, uh, who's going who's gonna to play what? Mm -hmm. Uh, I was like, I'm gonna be the drummer. He was like, I'm gonna be the drummer. <laughs> we had a drum, drum off. Drum off, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you lost? No, I no, became I the I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> I became the drummer, but yeah. this guy was, he was gracious with it. He was like, hey man, I'm playing guitars. Right, and the change was remarkable for me because after he won, I watched Don Kirshner's rock concert, and I saw the guitar player playing with the girls in front of the stage. <laughs> That's right. I'm like, ooh, ooh. yeah, Ma, I want a guitar. <laughs> so I was willingly. Because a drummer, we just had to that. sit back. We, <laughs> right. we can't get up. I, right. I understand I what you're saying. Right. I want to be up front anyway. <laughs> so it was, you know, bittersweet right. change. Right. So it was, but that battle really created what we were after. Uh-huh. You know. Well, the thing is, and, and, and since you started at drums, I mean, okay, how did you make that transition? Well, like I said, I saw that concert, and it intrigued me with the guitar player was up front mm -hmm. playing with the audience. So I got one, learned how to tune it, and so I started having to listen to the radio to catch songs to teach myself how to play them. Mm -hmm. So when it come on early in the day, I would learn the beginning, and at lunchtime, I would learn the middle, the, the first verse, and so on to the end of the, to the end of the night. And in a couple of days, I would have it. So I actually taught myself. Well, Tim, I mean, I, I, I've seen you perform many, many of times, man, and you're an outstanding guitarist. Well, thank you. And, thank and, you, and that's that's what this show's all about, because I, I really never knew that the drums was your your first passion. Absolutely. You know, yes. uh, yeah. but uh, as you grew up, I know the you know, New Horizon didn't come at that time, so just continue on, gentlemen. Tell me a little bit. The original name of the group was Soul Explosion. Soul Explosion. Soul Explosion. <laughs> had big horn sections. Uh, <laughs> me, my brother's art uh, at the time, Tim, but then we later added my brother Bart after uh, we had a uh, Larry, Larry Lee, Lee had played bass, played bass for oh, yeah. the group back in the day. He went to UCLA but, to school. Right. So that's how we lost him. But at the same time, well, I went to college as well. And I transferred back my second year and got back in the band. And uh, we uh, ended up teaching Bart, helping Bart learn how to play bass. Right. And then we brought Vargas along as well. Because this guy named Farley Taylor was playing keyboard for us at that time. And... Uh, 
Yeah, so that's how they fell in. And that's how the band actually got really started, you know, working together as a group. Well, um, okay, after the group got together and y'all, y'all, of course, everybody started doing those little local clubs and, and parties oh, yeah. and things Parks like that. Parks and recreation. Uh, you wasn't on the uh, show wagon. Were oh, you? Yeah. we was on the show wagon. <laughs> <laughs> Out there with, with all of our idols. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That's where we ran in. Uh, Roger in the and the Human Body. Mm. Uh, back yeah. in the day, it was a group mm. called TNT Powerhouse. Mm. And yeah. Yeah. Sun was, was overnight fun. low, low. Yeah. And, and we were actually we getting were, snuck into the uh, bar scene, <laughs> right? We, we were doing very some, young age uh, yeah. bar nights, you know, <laughs> late NCO night clubs. We did NCO yeah. club circuit. Well, well, it, and and that was that's really where the Dayton Sidewind is the band that I played in. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of uh, right. NCO circuits, man. Mm -hmm. uh, Columbus, uh, of course, we lived at Wright Patterson. We, right, right. you know, the, the Sidewinders lived at Wright Patterson. We were there e every month for about ten years. And right. there was a bunch of clubs there. Uh, you know, right now. yes, <laughs> you know, from officers' club. You can you can be at Wright Patterson and do three gigs a month. You know, right. Right. officers' club, uh, the, the the NCO club, and then you'll definitely have one of those little young teenage things that you might right. have to do. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, but I tell you, gentlemen. Uh, you, you two are, are, are some of the best musicians out of the city of Dayton, Ohio, but uh, tell me a little bit about your influences. My, uh, matter of fact, uh, Diamond, Jimmy Williams, mm -hmm. uh, was my idol at drums. And, uh, it was, uh, it's amazing because I used to listen to his records and I was like, no way this dude played this stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, in, in, one time. in one pass, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I <laughs> just, I practiced every day religiously and I, I know, I thank my parents for it every day. I know, that, I don't know how they put up with us, but we practiced every day. <laughs> you know, I, I always like, I, I, that's one question I like to ask bands because where did you practice at? Because here's my They're point. <laughs> Somebody had to hear that mess. Yeah, and it was a mess day. back then. You understand what I'm saying? Every Learning day. a new song, stopping ten times, yeah. starting over, starting over, starting over, yeah. and then someone else is in your house and they just got to listen to that man. They Tell me a little bit about that. That those are the funniest times when you're rehearsing and practicing and you and you don't own the home. So yeah, tell me. My mom was a whole lot of turn it. Turn, turn stuff down. <laughs> yes, right. No, turn it uh, down, <laughs> right, right. And then it went to, hey, don't you have to go to practice? Because that record was on the air then. <laughs> I was still at the house a week, young. And then, so that was great. But my influences was Sugar as well. Mm -hmm. and But I loved Parliament back in the day oh, before yeah. it was popular mm -hmm. and Funkadelic. But um, the players took us to record for a little guy named Vaughn uh, in Cincinnati, Fifth Floor Studios. And I'm a nervous wreck. They letting us record for the first time, right? Right, right. So uh, Sugar, I guess he knew I was nervous, so he took me to the coffee room and was like, look, Tim, I'm going to just tell you this. Don't let nobody tell you you can't play and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And my attack was incredible after that. I was just coming from Leroy Sugar Bonner. That's so. right. That lifted me. <laughs> now, Lee, Leroy used to, my, my brother is a uh, guitar player, uh, Paul Brooks. Brooks yeah. is a blues no man. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sugar really taught Paul. He, mm -hmm. would, he would come to our house. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's that's the that's the kind of guy he was, man. Yeah. He, he yeah, if incredible. he if he loved to see another person uh, get involved in yep. music, he he yep. wants to help you. Yep. And uh, yep. he was one of the first who I met because back in the day people didn't want to teach you what they knew. Right. Right. Most musicians they didn't want that. They didn't want you to listen to them, but they they changed our world with that. Yeah. And they, they, they let us, we used to practice in their rehearsal Marshall hall. Jones. Marshall That's, Jones grabbed Marshall us. Marshall Jones is the guy that took us. Yeah, he initiated said, it all. Yeah, he, he, turned fact, us, he took us from the amateur group to, to the, the professional, professional group. group. Right. Well, yeah, Matter of fact, he got us to show with Zap in Youngstown because a group didn't show up and we did so well they signed us the next year. That's how that happened. <laughs> well, let's, let's get to that. Let's, right. let's get to uh, <laughs> uh, uh, how, how you got in, into the recording uh, part of the uh, your journey. Wow, Stan, <laughs> it goes all the way back to when we first formed the group in uh, Soul Explosion, mm -hmm. which became Horizon, but let me go back. Yeah. As far as recording, we uh, did some recording uh, when I was 17. I took a long trip with my cousin all the way to 
Los Angeles, California, to ARC, which is Maurice White's label at the time, with a demo. <laughs> yep. <laughs> with a demo. And we drove. I didn't have no appointment, nothing. Mm -hmm. I just, they were my favorite group, but it was like, okay, I got to put this in their hands. I got to put this in their hands. <laughs> I get out there, I met Robert Wright, which was his right hand guy. I gave him a tape, and he was like, well, he said, uh, man, he said, you guys, he said, I uh, think you guys are a little young. We don't really like to deal with the uh, legalities of dealing with minors and, right. and stuff like that. And he was like, and he, he listened to a couple of songs. He said, I really don't have time to listen to the whole thing. He said, but somebody will get back in touch with you. So I was like, <laughs> okay. So I walk out my little demo, I left for demo, and didn't hear anything for about two, three months. One day, I got a package in the mail, and it was a stripped down version of our songs done the way Kalimba Productions would do it. Broke my heart that I lost that <laughs> tape. <laughs> I lost right. that tape because it was it, it stripped down all of the vocals and gave me just the raw music. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. And that right there let me know, I was like, we're going to be pros. Mm -hmm. And we never stopped. Then subsequently, that's when uh, we did a lot of gigging, met Marshall Jones. Mm -hmm. And like he said, Marshall is the key because then they had a studio that they rehearsed in. And we had free reign to rehearse anytime we wanted <laughs> yeah. to. Yep. And incredible. When it uh we are when we was kids, man, we didn't think about business, uh the music business as a business. We just wanted to make oh, records, hear yeah. our music on the radio, not thinking it's money involved yeah, it's, here. It's money involved yeah. here and legalities yeah. involved yeah. And here. If you, and if you yeah. don't have them papers signed right, yep. uh, kinda, you won't see a dime. You know, so we pray Legal the price counsel. by loving the, mm -hmm. just loving what we were yes. doing, mm -hmm. you know, so we because we didn't pay attention to the money side. And, and, and this is why this show is so important. Yes. Because of, of musicians and professional musicians like you yeah. and, and you have the younger musicians listening who's yeah. trying to get out there. Yeah. Hey, take care of the business part. That's of right. It. It's called show yeah. business. Show business. You know, and a lot of us only think about the show part. Right, you know, it should be called a business show. show. That's right, and, and, and let's get let's, let's get the papers signed correct, yes, right? Absolutely, and, and, and I and I understand, um, but uh, let's let's get into the funk part of New Horizon. Oh, all right, boy. now yeah. when you you started that, you got you got your demo heard. You you, you now uh, uh, got all your mentors that they're checking you out, and here it comes Roger Zap group. Did did they help you in any kind of way? Uh. It was like this. Uh, Marshall Jones talked to Larry. Mm -hmm. Larry talked to Roger. We went to Roger's house for an audition. All he cared about is if we could sing harmony. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we sung right. a couple of uh, just freelance lyrics mm -hmm. with him and his guitar. He was like, sign up. Right. It was, it was just, just that sign yeah. up. It was it was like that. Yeah, but we were a band. We were already so a self-contained group. We mm -hmm. were like. You know, Larry was like, well, y'all, you guys going to have to put your instruments down. I'm like, what? It's like, yeah, because y'all can sing. We want y'all to be a singing group. It's like, no, we could play. Right, right. So, so happily, I had dreamed playing and singing, but didn't nobody know this but me and Mark. Mm -hmm. And I had been working on it, so when it came time to do it, I'm like, I'm going to play them tracks and sing. They were like, you can't do that, Tim. Roger said, you can't do that. Okay, watch. Come over to Studio C. <laughs> I was playing guitar, singing, leading background vocal, and doing choreography <laughs> at the same time. And so. then, and then uh, he kind of changed his oh, mind. Oh, yeah. Changed everybody's mind. <laughs> yeah, but, it, it, you know, and during production, though, that didn't go down because right. we really didn't have, um, they didn't really, they were real busy at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the notion that we were a singing type of group is, I mean, it's kind of projected <laughs> that way right. with, with the record. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, but... We got funky tracks on, on the records, you know what I'm saying? And, Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's like he said, uh, I'm a singer too. I sing and play as well. Very and well. <laughs> they didn't believe that would happen either, but unfortunately it did. But uh, it created an issue for me 
being a drummer and a lead singer. Uh -huh. right? So it's like, I can't lead sing playing drums. Right. That is not, I right. mean, that's because boring. Because he's singing majority, of, if not all the songs. So, you know, like Larry Blackman, right. Blackman was doing cameo, but he was kind of chanting, you know, as opposed to singing. Mark right. was singing and playing. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just proper to get him up front. So, but we still had to have him pick a drummer that was qualified, which it took a fight, but. Oh, <laughs> Really because they, you knew the they door. couldn't play as good as you. Well, it's just come on, tell the truth. <laughs> and that and <laughs> part of it, they, I mean, some of them were good, but it's right. it's you it's, as a drummer, you expect certain things to happen, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, and a uh, better example of that is after the New Horizon thing, I became Rogers drummer. And well, tell us, tell us a little bit. But you know, you're jumping, man. I, I didn't know <laughs> that. Now that's <laughs> something I didn't know. When when uh, when Roger did. Uh, the, matter of fact, the hype is clear. I want to be your man. Mm -hmm. uh, the Zap band, the original, the Troutman, uh, Lester, Zap, Shirley was hot at the time. Mm -hmm. That original group went with Shirley and was Shirley's band. And Roger, uh, I met Larry at Salem Mall one day after we had had a disagreement about the New Horizon situation. Uh, he said, look, he said, uh, man, he said, let's let bygones be bygones. He said, but Roger needs a band for his solo career. He said, I'm going to start with my nephew, Rufus, mm -hmm. and Roger wants you to play drums. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, how you feel about that? I said, I'll do it. <laughs> and... From uh, there, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, and uh, the, yeah. what's what's amazing? Yeah, smoking hot. Then, what's amazing too. about that man is uh, he told me Roger used to take me for a walk every day when I first uh, started learning uh, all the Zap records that he wanted to do in the show. We walk around Catalpa. He said, "Look, man," he said. I told Larry. He said, "Me and Lester done played together all our life." He said, "But he said, you my drummer now." He said, and. I don't care when the tour is over or not, you're going to be my drummer and Lester's going to play for Shirley. That's it. That's all. <laughs> he said, I promise you that. And he did. He kept his word to that. He's like, you my drummer. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. New Horizon. Give, give, give me a little history on the, on, on the, on the group now as New Horizon. Tell me a little about the, me, that. Mark, Bart, and Vargas. It was just the four of us on mm -hmm. this first album. Then we added... Uh, the other brother, Art, on the second album, which is this one. But um, Billy Beck uh, and, uh, and, and uh, Jimmy Diamond and mm -hmm. Chet, Greg Jackson, they were all producers in this. On both records, but this cake. one uh, this one right here had uh, Jimmy and uh, Chet and Billy Beck quite a bit. Right. And uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's amazing that our idols uh, you know, we were right. able to work with idols yeah. of ours on Once those we records. Got deal, right? We got you the know. deal. They were signed with Troutman too, so now we reunited to who taught us or who we learned from. And I mean, the the gift of of that knowledge they had was impeccable. Right? Yeah, impeccable. Well, Both you know, albums we... here. Both albums here. I mean, this one had mm -hmm. a single that was pretty marginal. This one didn't get the the I promotions delayed, or the yeah. airplay uh, that you, you know, were, were hoping for. That, yeah, and a lot of things came out with this one mm -hmm. that um, really we have to say uh, it wasn't so bad that it wasn't a smash because if you think about all of the hit records that came out yes, at the same time, same, this was this released. Was released. Mm -hmm. Man, I mean, it's uh, it's mind boggling because you're talking Whitney Houston. Michael Jackson, you talk about Atomic Dog, you talk about Juicy Fruit, you talk about yes. Freakazoid, oh, you talk about Cold Blooded by Rick James. Mm -hmm. And we were on Columbia. Yeah. On Columbia label. <laughs> okay. Columbia, that, not Warner no. Brothers. Right. <laughs> Columbia, yeah. so. It was, know, and this was re released in Japan. No, this was re released in not, not, England. Now explain that. A to, double to CD uh -huh. that was released in Europe. Mm -hmm. in 2010. A label called Funky Town purchased the rights from Sony mm -hmm. to these products to combine both records into a CD in 2010. 
Now, 30 that, years later. 30 years later. And here we go with the business part of it. Yes, sir. Right. Where, in other words, we're you never doing, know where right. your songs are going to go. We're doing show business, not mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. show. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, there it is. That's overseas. the price we had to pay. Right. You know, so I contacted the guy, tried to anyway, and was like, you, you are selling our pictures. So, you know, let us come, let me bring the band to Europe. Mm -hmm. And we do the tours, and we call it even. But I haven't heard from them yet. But it, it, it's being it, sold. It's, it, it, <laughs> yeah, they own the rights. So yeah. Well, you know, Funk Museum is here. Funk Museum. Yeah. And I tell you what, gentlemen, we want to make sure that y'all two are a part of it, yes, and, including the whole group. Right. So, uh, yeah, just just tell me a little bit about. What you think that you, your contributions could be with, with our Funk Museum here in the city, why you feel that it needs to be here in the city of Dayton. You know, uh, we, we, we all kind of know that, you know, people sometimes even call it the city of Funk because of all the, all the nationally known groups that have come out of it. But I'd like your personal intake. Well, um, actually, thanks to social media, um, a broader spectrum of people. It's a lot of people never heard not one song from this group, mm -hmm. and the, it's it's history. I mean, you got eighteen or so groups, twenty, something. 20 groups mm -hmm. that done put their print on funk music in this area mm -hmm. that still go unheard. Um, you know, and if there's a rock and roll hall of fame, why not a funk mm -hmm. uh, museum? You know what I'm saying? It's it's only fitting with, if you think about all of the records sold, all the funk records sold from just this city. It should have been already here. Well, <laughs> you know, my thing is, you know, David Webb and his staff. Great job. They're doing a great, great job getting, 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 getting yep. this funk museum be. off the yeah. ground. Uh, yeah. But we need some help with the New Horizon right. members. That's right. We want y'all right. to, everywhere you go with all you... That's right. Where, wherever you, and I know y'all still play. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I know absolutely. you still play. Yes. So, you know, we, we've got to make sure that the, everybody knows that this, this funk museum. We're is, married in. You We're know. married in to this. Cause and and with me, important. I don't know if y'all uh, have heard that the, the radio station, uh, Soul of Dayton, 98.7, I feature. Oh, I listen I to you feature, every day. I right. feature <laughs> nothing but local bands from right. the city yeah, of Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, what we want to say to you, we want to hear some more new arrivals. Yeah, we want to hear so. some of that. Well, see, that's that's where I'm at with this. <laughs> yeah, we it's appreciate coming. you, though. Yeah. It, it's coming, yeah, we gentlemen, appreciate because you. It, it's one of those kind of things where uh, uh, I need you to help me and and, and, and with this, with with the backing of the Funk Museum and Dave, David Webb and his staff. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what this is all about. The Funk Chronicles is here to also get this word out to people. Let them know that, you know, and it's, it's not from Dayton, it's not just for Dayton, Ohio. Right, right. No, no, I mean, right. you know, when we talk funk, man, yeah, the world. Know, yeah, the, we're right. talking about the funk, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, right. We're Cameo, about, yeah. Barcades, everybody, everybody, you know. everybody, you know. George, the, the naturals, yeah, everybody. You know. Everybody, you know. And, if one yeah. other thing, man, I'm, uh, I just, Every time I look at this man and I think about, tell me about that. I think about my guy Roger. He told me, man, uh, when we did, uh, I want to be a man. Mm -hmm. He did a remix, and he took me in the studio. He said, "Look, man," he said, "I know we," he said, "I know we didn't do you justice with the New Horizon records." He said, "But he said I'm gonna put you on my record." It's he said, beautiful "He said, and I guarantee you, we going we gonna make magic." Mm -hmm. Here it is. Yep. You know so, what I'm it's a beautiful it, thing. Here it is. That's beautiful. This man. record ring gold. Thing. So that's uh, you know one of the biggest. Uh, you know, to me, not having the commercial success with this, this right here made up for that for me. <laughs> right. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's it's just uh, it's incredible, man. How incredible Roger really and was. And you know what? This too. This this funk situation, man. Mm -hmm. That and the respect you you share for us is it's priceless. It's absolutely priceless. Well, it, it, it is it is one of these kind of things where uh, it, it, we all we all need to help uh, uh, with with this. Yeah. You know, yeah. you 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 can do a lot of talking, but we need some action. Yeah, we need some action. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and, and that's why you know, what are you doing today, Tim? Are you are, are you uh, 
you got your own group going now, or what's happening? Uh, well, I had you, neck you... surgery in April, so I'm finally healing up and getting well enough to start playing again. But Mark and I are about to start New Horizon again and no, tour not. one more time. Oh. oh, yes, we are. We got a CD. And we got some CDs. A CD in the work yeah. ca called Relentless. Yeah. Yes. Called Relentless. Ah. Uh, we're looking to uh, try and have a spring release, but... Okay. Yeah. I, I see you have something else over there, Mr. Yeah, Tim. another song we had worked on and, and finished uh, called Funk Hopper, you know, b directed at the hip hoppers that sample our music. Uh -huh. But we funk hoppers, not hip hoppers. So that's basically what this is about. <laughs> I like that. I like what you said. Zap and everything. So, and this is a song called Big Girls. Uh -huh. That uh, uh, you know, just for all the healthy women, you know, and to you know, respect them that's as right. well. You know, you know what I'm saying? Big girls need good loving too. That's right, and, so, and you know, we we, 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 we aim to please. My daughter <laughs> used to call them just a little swollen, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but they're they they uh, just but, a little swollen. Just a little swollen, man. Yeah, that's big all. bubbles, no trouble. Well, you know, but oh, good. but and, but they, they they I can understand that. Yeah. And I tell you, gentlemen. The uh, F Funk Museum uh, is is looking uh, uh, for you to, to just get the word out. Uh, we're here at, uh, doing the Chronicles, uh, uh, and we couldn't we couldn't do this without you two gentlemen. You understand what we we're mean by in. that? Because we all going to be in it together. Yep. Yes, sir. And, and, and I, I appreciate everything, man. Now, the, I'm noticing. I don't. You said the additional member here was who? On, the, on this album here, uh, the, the yeah. brother, oldest brother. Yeah, that's Thomas my oldest brother. brother. Oldest uh, brother. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, three of them are my brothers. Yeah, and then my main man here. Right, family oh. for real. So yeah. it was, uh, it's family group. Yeah. Well, ain't that the only yeah. reason why I said it like that? Yeah. How come y'all didn't? Where did, where did the name New Horizons come from then? Because to me, I you know we would I would have called you so and so brothers and call it you know the, you know the, we, the, Tom, we the Thomas brothers or something like uh, that. You know, well, I knew it was about the, reaching the you know a peak, so you know it's going looking up. So right. what did you say that? Yeah. <laughs> we <were right. laughs> horizon. horizon was horizon. horizon. Mm -hmm. We went from soul explosion oh, to horizon. horizon. And then when we signed with Larry, with, with Larry now Trotman, it became, became new horizon. horizon. He just put the new in front of it. Oh yeah, yeah. He, he didn't want yeah. no static the branding. Yeah. And that's right, right. right. <laughs> Again, right. business, that was, business. Right. That was that. Yeah. yeah. He knew to get the business. He took a share, <laughs> and we didn't even know it. Yeah. <laughs> he took a share. Yeah. And invited yeah. himself to it. Well, we didn't know. You know, well, so. gentlemen. I tell you. Um, well, so uh, before we, because we're about to wrap up here. Now you're saying you're about ready to get, get your group started again. Now exactly what are y'all doing to get that done? Well, first uh, finishing the record because right now, I mean, the record should generate uh, the ability to work. Um, you know, there's there's some work we could do with this, but um, you know, we've got uh, things that we have to take care of home right. front wise. Right. So. It's got to be feasible for us to do it, right. and right now that's not exactly in play. And we know the business now, so if we go out, we want to have some product. That's right. <laughs> so. and, and and doing it the correct way. Right. Absolutely. You know, not just because because uh, you just love the it love of it. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because especially as you get older. Yeah. We're uh, in the fourth yeah. quarter. <laughs> we want to be in the game, not on the bench. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, it, it's been a pleasure. I mean, seriously. Uh, and and I, I just want to make sure that, that, that our, our uh, listening and, 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 and audience would uh, be uh, very supportive of your new pro pro project that you're going to be doing. Um, don't hesitate to let us know uh, when, it's, when it's out there. Uh, and definitely when New Horizon do another Horizon, yeah. I want to know about it. Oh, yeah. It's coming. You know, understand? get the first copy. <laughs> you know, because this is what it's all yeah, about, that's man. That's right. We really appreciate yeah. you gentlemen spending some time with us. Uh, this is going to be uh, uh, another big show for us because of the historical part of you two gentlemen and definitely making sure that y'all let everybody know about the Funk Museum. Uh, David Webb and his staff and, and how, how good of a job that, that's going on here in the city of Dayton, Ohio. Absolutely. And because, uh, yes. you know, Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio. 
uh, is where where we want to make sure this funk Funky museum town. stays. The funk capital Funky. of the world. Funky <laughs> town. All right. Well, Absolutely. thanks, Dan. Man. All right. Appreciate Again, you thank you very yeah. much, gentlemen. My pleasure. You know, my this is yours truly, Stan the Man Brooks, host of the Funk Music Hall of Fame and yeah. Exhibition Center, yeah. award-winning show, Funk Chronicles. Until next time, keep it funky. Keep it funky. Keep it funky.